Hey, welcome to another episode of geekoutdoors.com. And now that E3 2016 has pretty much officially wrapped up, what are my thoughts on the best of E3? Now, before there are any flame wars, just remember these are my opinions and my thoughts. And so uh, I might not have listed everything that happened in E3 2016, or maybe I might not have listed things that you want, but these are actually my picks. So first and foremost, let's start off with Microsoft and specifically, with their brand new Xboxes, you know? So we have the Xbox S, um, Xbox One S, and then also the Xbox Project Scorpio. Now, the Xbox S One, it's basically the slim version of the Xbox One. And as anybody remember, the very first Xbox One was really big and clunky, and it had a humongous power brick. And this reminded me so much of the original Xbox when it first came out. And you know, Microsoft, they're just really not known for design at least the initial version of it you know compared that to the ps4 where their engineers just did an amazing job and it was already a beautiful system right off the bat and i still think it's a beautiful system now the xbox one s version the slim version it is a real looker it's a stunner you know it's all white and obviously it might come in different colors um, it has some nice side grill it's much much thinner there it's about 40 percent thinner than the current xbox one and most importantly it has no power brick because the internal power is on the inside of the unit and the controller is actually redone as well it actually has a different uh, grip underneath and so it's a really really good looking system and basically this is going to be the replacement for the current xbox one now it does have 4K capability, but that's primarily for Blu-ray and also for uh, Netflix. So more of like the media watching part, but not actually the games itself. And so um, I think that was a really good move uh, for Xbox to do that. And then another one that they have is Project Scorpio. Now this is basically um, in response to the PS4 Neo. So this is basically a 4K unit. So it's gonna definitely have upgraded specs. And so this is gonna allow it really to handle VR and that's the whole point of the PS4 Neo as well and I do have some thoughts about consoles and I'll leave that at the end about all these new consoles but that's the first thing that um, caught my eye from uh, Microsoft's announcement. Next up is Nintendo and to be honest with you the only thing that really got my interest on Nintendo was the brand new Legend of Zelda and uh, that thing looked really really awesome. I mean I've always been a Zelda fan and um, my favorite is still going to be the very first Zelda. Zelda 2 was kind of weird, but I like that one too. And I did like the Zelda on the Super Nintendo. And the ones on a later, uh, later system, they were pretty good as well. So I'm really looking forward to it. But other than that, uh, not much else that really caught my eye. And, you know, Nintendo NX, you know, I'll talk about that a little bit later. But, um, yeah, so Zelda, definitely. Now, the one that is going to get most of the time on this is Sony's event. I mean, Sony is just knocking out of the park. I, I really, I really can't say enough about it because you know one of the things that I talk about in many videos, um, and yes, you probably see my old vi other videos. I'm primarily a retro gamer, or for me, it's not retro gaming. That's what I grew up with, and uh, I'm not really a big fan of the new modern games because it's not really about the games as much as it is about you know microtransaction DLCs how they could monetize it it makes sense but it takes away a lot of the gaming experience however Sony for the longest time they've always had a, a focus on the games and don't get me wrong there's lots of uh, you know IP titles there's kind of Call of Duties and all types of games that you would expect for the big triple-a titles but Sony all also invests heavily in you know producing really good games they really support their independent publishers as well and so with that being said there were so many games and um, I'm just gonna pick out a few that I thought really stood out the first being is the new God of War or you know I don't think it's gonna be called God of War 4 it's just gonna be called God of War and man this game looks amazing and you know um, say what you will about rehashing franchises in a lot of cases, it's just the same game every single year. Just think about Call of Duty. But God of War, it's the same, but they keep improving it. And the newest God of War, it really looks like a more mature, older Kratos. And he's there with his son. And if you see some of the preview footage or gameplay footage, it's absolutely stunning. You know, I'm not sure if this is running on a PS4, the regular one, or the PS4 Neo, or if it's running on a PC dev because, you know, it's still in development. But whatever it is, you know it's going to be amazing. So that's the first off. The next thing that really, really caught my eye 
was um, actually Hideo Kojima. That was a very big surprise, but he came out with a preview of his new game that he's working along with Sony, and it has uh, Redis, I think that's his name, he's from The Walking Dead, and he was the original uh, actor who was going to be in the you know original horror game by Konami, and uh, unfortunately the name just kind of skips all right now, but uh, you know that game got cancelled, and that was a pretty big thing, and Hideo Kojima, and um, the director, Gila Tormo, was actually supposed to produce that game until uh, Konami uh, cancelled it. So um, it was a really quick preview, but it looked really eerie, you know, um, the actor, uh, Reedus, and he was just out there in the open with these weird creatures and there's floating, uh, I guess, humanoids around him, and that's about it. And I think I remember, uh, the game was Death Stranding, or yeah, I think that was the game. That was, it looks really cool, very enticing. And then along with that same horror theme, um, they had Resident Evil 7, uh, along with something a little special as well, which I'll talk about here at the end of the uh, PlayStation 4 wrap-up. And uh, one thing that I was kind of excited to see uh, was the Crash Bandicoot uh, redone, remastered. You know, uh, it's it's kind of funny, you know, because Crash Bandicoot, it came out on the very first PlayStation, and for a lot of people, that was the Sony's uh, mascot for the very longest time. I was really impressed, you know. Um, there was another one by... Um, Guerrilla Studios, the ones who did the Killzone series, they showed some more footage of the Horizon Zero, their futuristic robotic dinosaur game. Uh, that one, it just impresses me more and more every time I see it. And um, also, uh, the last part of the PlayStation event that I really enjoyed was their focus on VR. Sony is going to be at the forefront of VR or virtual reality, and their unit is officially priced at $399, and it'll be out in October of this year. And they showed off some really cool titles, one of which is Resident Evil 7. Um, that looked really awesome on it. And they were promising that there's going to be about 50 titles by the time it launches. You know, so it's a definitely going to be a big thing for Sony to push VR, and so we'll see how that comes out. Now, um, outside of that, uh, the other two things that uh, I was really happy to see was two Kickstarter games. One being Bloodstain, and I did a video about it just a little bit earlier, uh, and there was actually a playable demo there at E3, and there are also the people who backed it over $60 are going to get to play that demo as well, the same one that's at E3, and that looked really, really sweet, and so um, I can't wait to Bloodstain come out. And the second Kickstarter one that really impressed me was Ukulele, and Ukulele, uh, if you recall, is actually made by the former team, Rare, the former Rare team that did the original banjo kazooie and uh, it looked really whimsical uh, and I, I can't wait till that comes out I, I used to love that game on the n64 um, and also you know they were just rare itself i mean they produced so many games donkey kong country you know they did that one um, and they did many many others they were a powerhouse and i'm really glad that uh, they're doing ukulele because uh, it's gonna bring a lot of smiles to a lot of retro gamers or gamers who could remember uh, them producing those games that I just mentioned and so uh, the last part of this I want to talk about is consoles you know so you know initially everybody was talking about the Nintendo NX and then uh, Sony came up uh, with the news of the PlayStation 4 Neo and now Microsoft is introducing their Xbox One S and also their Project Scorpio so what does this mean well the console wars are not over and the only unfortunate thing is, um, you know, even though the PS4 and the Xbox One has been out a lot longer than you would think, um, you know, we're getting to the point where, you know, console launches to me, they're not as important as they used to be. Not to say that these systems won't sell a lot, but at some point, uh, the hardware that we have is going to be so powerful, and most of our gaming is going to be on the internet anyway, and also a lot of them are going to be done you know, through uh, servers and grid systems, you know, uh, like NVIDIA Grid, you know, so um, we probably won't need as much hardware as we used to. And then uh, more and more of gaming, you know, the PC gaming front is huge, and so a lot of people like that, you know, the, the ability to upgrade the systems and to, you know, make it function the way they would like. So uh, that's another area. So although I did like the introductions, I, I do like the fact that, you know, they are making improvements to the consoles. I'm not as excited as I used to be with consoles. However, if I had to choose a console um, that I'm going to get, I'm probably going to get a console because the games are 
at least for me, the games on the Sony PlayStation 4 are getting so good, it's probably worth picking up. I'm probably going to wait till the PS4 Neo comes out, and I'll, I'll pick that one up. So uh, that's basically it for my uh, semi-wrap-up of E3 2016. I might have missed a few games here and there, but uh, those are the ones that I can remember right off the bat, and those are the ones that really caught my attention. Now, if you watched E3 2016 or you caught up with it, what are your favorites? Which company or which games did you think were the best? You know, leave your comments and ideas below. And as always, I am on Snapchat at Geek Outdoors. And so we'll see you on another episode. Thanks for checking out this episode. And as always, if you like these videos, be sure to click on the subscribe button. And for full written content, audio content, and additional geek stuff, head over to geekoutdoors.com and I'll see you outdoors on the very next episode.